Dear clients, I'm Richard, Philip Siate dealer. In this week's market commentary, I will discuss all the initial market reactions to the much awaited December FOMC meeting uh, to proceed with a mini taper of $10 billion, initial cut in money purchase of bonds starting in January 2014, as well as what to expect as we usher in the new year. In addition, I will also review the near term crude palm oil CPO price outlook. In my last commentary, I alluded to the October FOMC minutes released on 20th, 20th of November, which noted improvements in the labor market that could trigger QE tapering, as well as market's expectation that Federal Reserve will push back its first official rate hike from late 2014 to late 2015. Indeed, in its Wednesday statement to scale back its bond buying program, the Fed has reiterated that it will keep short-term rates near zero well past the time unemployment rate falls below 6.5% as long as inflation rate remains below 2%. So the message to the market participants is clear. The Fed is fine-tuning the amount of bond purchases by offsetting the impact by strengthening its forward interest rate guidance. Well, the initial market reactions are broadly positive. S&P 500 surged to new record high, while the Asian markets also reacted positive, positively in early Thursday trade though some markets par their earlier gains and end the mix. The US dollar gained broadly against most other currencies, surging noticeably versus the yen to a five-year high as investors interpreted the Fed's move to par back its bond buying program as a sign the world's biggest economy is improving. I would also like to highlight that during last week, in a real act of bipartisanship, leaders in the House of Representatives and Senate has agreed on discretionary spending limit for the next two years. What this implies is that the fiscal drag associated with the sequester will be mitigated and that a key aspect of policy uncertainty that could potentially undermine both business and consumer confidence has been removed. Looking ahead in 2014, notwithstanding improved clarity in terms of US monetary and fiscal policy directions, Markets will face the test of whether earnings growth can keep pace with economic optimism in the upcoming se earnings seasons in January. In February, expect political wrangling over the debt ceiling to come into play, especially as next year brings with it the backdrop of the mid-term elections. Now for the Q&A section, we have a question from Jasmine on what is the near-term crude palm oil CPO price outlook. Let us review both the supply and demand sides of the equation. Firstly, the CPO near to mid-term demand is underpinned by global economic optimism going to 2014, which IMF forecasts to rise to an estimate 3.7% from an estimated 3% in 2013. Secondly, planned increases in global mandated biodiesel blending appear to be taking off smoothly, thereby potentially expanding CPO base biodiesel demand growth. In particular, the Indonesian government raised in September the amount of palm-derived biodiesel that producers must blend into subsidized fuel to 10% from 7.5%. The requirement will be extended to non-subsidized fuel and industrial users in January, and power plants will be obliged to use supply with a 20% blend. Thirdly, given that domestic port inventories in China have eased to the year's low, expect restocking demand from China as well as from India. A recent industrial survey indicates that purchases by China, the second biggest importer, would reach 550,000 tons in December after 500,000 tons in November. According to a separate report by the Solvents Extractors Association of India, India, the biggest CPO buyer, imported 550,663 tons in November from 534,000 556 tons a year ago. Note that China and India together accounts for 26% of global CPO demand and thus could be a potent re-accelerator of CPO demand growth. While on the supply side, concern on high CPO inventory may ease as a result of expected slower global production driven by lower yield due to 1. Tree stress post the high production cycles in 2011 to 2013 and 2 lingering impact of El Nino weather. In the longer term, new land regulation, especially in Indonesia, the largest CPO producing nation, 
could also slow planting. In terms of price trend, CPO hits 40 month high of 2,692 ringgit on November 22nd. Prices are heading for the first annual gain in three years on speculation. Indonesia output may decline for the first time since 1998. In conclusion, a tightening supply growth picture against a backdrop of relatively robust demand growth points towards a supportive outlook for CPO price, at least in the near term. However, key risks to this robust CPO price outlook includes 1. Stronger than expected rise in global oil seed production, particularly soya bean production in the US in the second half of 2014. 2. Changes in government regulations on plantation land ownership. 3. Global economic slowdown. Clients may consider using Philips CFD to trade equities and indexes across markets to capitalize on trading opportunities in both rising and falling markets. In addition, you may also trade based on different strategies using many more benchmarks which are available with Philips ETFs. Look forward to Monday's weekly market watch, where the commentator will be covering outlook of Intercontinental Hotels Group. We want to hear from you. Any questions, any comments on Monday's topic, please drop them via Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching this week's Market Watch. I'm Richard from Philip CFD. Tune in next week for more Market Watch videos.